Well, today, John Coleman and I get to speak with Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood. And how you doing, Manny? And I'm doing fine. <laughs> Manny, you are you are the master of Hollywood and films. And what most people don't know is you also are a master of trivia. Well, I love trivia, yeah. Old films is your specialty, but you know Hollywood. And uh, I understand you have a little quiz for us today. Is that right? Or Well, I not know so much a quiz, but I'll, I'll walk down memory lane, and I wanted to pick a, spe a specific topic. The uh, the rock and rollers who have appeared in in Hollywood movies, mm. those, those uh, folks who did not go into this realm of entertainment with the idea of being on film, but ended up on film. And some had very, very fine careers on film, as a matter of fact. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to, to look back at the 50s and 60s rockers and uh, and see how really prolific they were on screen. So Yeah, yeah. Now, are we talking about um, films that were um, featured, like Hard Day's Night featured the Beatles, or are we talking about uh, appearances, rock and rollers' appearances. Yes, like, like Elvis. Do both. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> why not? Why so, so, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah, right. so. It's very easy for us to begin at Elvis. I mean, obviously, he had, he was, you know, he really brought rock and roll to the forefront and, and made it very uh, viable for all generations. Yes. And so when, you know, when he decided to start going into the movies, although it probably wasn't just his decision, of course, his team, um, you know, they, they, he made, I mean, he made like 30 films. Uh, he was 30? not really, yeah, he made a lot of films. I mean, it wasn't like just one or two. He, right. he, he had a whole career granted, maybe 25 of them are very forgettable, <laughs> but I mean, his early work was really good. I mean, he was fabulous actually in love me tender. The only film where he actually dies in the film. And and then of course uh, you can't forget Jailhouse Rock, but right. he made a lot of films. I think what what was really good about his films is that it's kind of curious to know who who appeared with him. Like Mary Tyler Moore appeared in one yes. of his films, or yeah. or Walter Matthau appeared in one of his films. So I mean, it was always a it was always an Elvis film, but it's kind of nice to see these uh, up and coming actors. Uh, show up in his films, and you know he had quite a career with them. He did not like doing them, to to be really? honest. He'd rather have been out making music, but um, arguably more people saw Elvis, and it kept his name in the spotlight because of the films. So, well, if you recall, Elvis at the beginning was not an accepted entity. He was uh, one of those nasty boys who sang bad music and he was protested yeah. by all kinds of people and it you know was, i think it was the movies that gave him popular mm -hmm. acceptance with the older generation well, that's a really good point yeah well, well, we're well, gonna well, say no i think ed sullivan is actually what what brought him into the mainstream i mean really it's like the beatles well, as well uh, but in any event you're, maybe you're both right yeah and maybe we are yeah. maybe maybe you want to be a diplomat or. Ambassador, yeah. Ambassador Pacheco, okay? Making I, offer a, I offer a third reason why he might have become acceptable, and that's the Blackboard Jungle. Now, Elvis is not in that movie. No. But, but, but the introduction of that film by Bill Haley in the comments with Rock Around the Clock, right. in a very popular movie with Glenn Ford, Sidney mm. Poitier, Vic Morrow, um, you know, they introduced rock and roll at the opening of that film. And that made rock and roll just a little bit more acceptable. So well, I don't, I don't know about that because if you recall the movie, it was a very serious movie uh, about you know nasty stuff in schools. Yeah, that's true. And the music, yeah. I, I would argue, with, the music was chosen to us to increase the feeling that th this drama, this bad stuff happening in the film, uh, is related to the music. Well, so that's a good I'm, point. I'm not sure I, mean, it's I agree hard, with you. It's hard to argue with you on this one, John. You might be right on that. Uh, other other uh, actors who would then start appearing in uh, other singers who would start appearing in films uh, was mainly because of the efforts by of all people, and I think we've had this conversation before, but I want to reprise it. John Wayne. I, th hmm. I, I this sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. John Wayne had this knack for including young up-and-coming stars and yes. eventually singers into his 
fold. I mean, yeah. it starts with people like a Jeffrey Hunter. I mean, Jeffrey Hunter was by no means a singer. But then all of a sudden you see Fabian in yep. uh, North to Alaska, or yep. you see uh, Frankie Avalon in the Alamo, or yeah. Glenn yeah. Campbell in True Grit. Or Ricky Nelson. Or Ricky Nelson in yeah. Rio Bravo. That's exactly yeah. right. And so all of a sudden, and Dean Martin for that matter. I mean, Dean Martin was a singer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he was in a rock and roller, but he was a singer. Sure. So you, you get these 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 um, these uh, up and coming actors out of these established rock and roll artists. Yeah. John Wayne of all people. Yeah. Well, but, you but, know, but, but, Manny, but, but, I think. Go ahead, go ahead John. I, I was going to say, I think that phenomenon of it's called you know cross-pollination you've got a movie you've got john wayne who's known as the tough guy the hero he needs to bring in a younger audience he's only too happy to grab today it would be taylor swift okay yeah, yeah you're right uh, only too happy to give them a shot work with them don't make their acting job too hard right right but take them out of their element and and bring their audience into the John Wayne film. But before, so, we, get to, be, before we get too far afield here, uh, Elvis sang in his movies. That was part and parcel of it. A lot of the people that John Wayne brought in weren't not necessarily to sing, but I'm thinking of the beach blanket bingo kind of Well, movies. we'll get to that in a second, but, but I'm going to push back on you. I, Rick Nelson sang in Real Bravo. Glenn oh, Campbell yeah. sang the opening... Did Fabian, exactly. did Fabian okay. sing in uh, whatever he was in? I mean... Oh, in the middle of the movie, they do a whole little a couple of songs uh, with Rick Nelson and Dean Martin. Absolutely. Uh, forgettable movie for me. Sorry. Real Bravo? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> forgettable. It was the opening film for the last year's TCM Film Festival, but it's forgettable for art. I mean, really? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not, you know, you've got to be of a certain age. Wow. Okay, okay, let's go to your side of the coin here then. The Beach movies also brought in lots of singers. Oh, yes. I mean, it begins at the top with Frankie sure. Atwan and Annette Funicello. Right. But, you know, you get Leslie Gore and you get all right. these, you know, young yeah. pre-Beatles type uh, singers and bands and things like yeah. the Beach Boys. The Beach Boys appear. Jan and Dean. I and mean, these folks are now are going to be singing and they've got a venue, a perfect venue Beachy movies and beach singers. Right. Why not? I mean, that works. So that that you're right, Art. That was a very popular way to introduce rock and roll and make it acceptable, albeit very silly films. Absolutely. But very acceptable. Yeah. You know. Uh, Although into I, have the to admit, I have to admit, uh, Elvis actually did act in a lot of his films. Uh, they, they had storylines. We made that point, Art. <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 good, Art. We're good on that. But okay. Annette Funicello and Frankie Avalon, um, they acted. Yeah. Come on now. I, were, oh, okay. <laughs> How about uh, the, you mentioned the Beatles, John? I mean, Hard Day's Night, Help. Mm -hmm. But you know, we never mentioned things like Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine. These right. were films. They actually. Yep. Look, they didn't have an Elvis type career in films, but they made some films throughout the 1960s. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you can't you can't say that the you know that the Beatles didn't have a film career. They they actually did. So, good point. Uh, and, uh, do you remember? Do you remember the movie Oh What a Lovely War? Uh, yes. It featured John Lennon. I don't think all the Beatles, if I recall right. correctly. Right. And it was an anti-war film. George Harrison would appear in a couple of movies as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah by himself. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. The Beatles, you, you can't discount the work that the Beatles, and here's what's even more important. They brought in the British Invasion, and then, then you started seeing some of these acts appear in British yeah. Invasion movies. Uh, you would see uh, Peter Noon in the Herman's Hermits or the Animals or right. the mm -hmm. Stones. I, they're, not a, they're, they're an American band, but I remember... Uh, Love and Spoonful appearing several times in the movie What's Up, Tiger Lily. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it was kind of a weird. They just start singing. They kind of they get away from the plot, and they would yeah. just start singing. I, well, I don't know what the plot was of What's Up, Tiger Lily. The plot Lily. was to draw people into the movies to pay for a ticket and buy popcorn and, and soda. And I think the last group that I want to mention <clears throat> from the um, from the 1960s comes out of what I call documentaries. 
So they would have a documentary of a concert that was being filmed, for example, oh. that, that problematic concert that took place in oh, Monterey, sure. uh, you know, yeah. with, uh, with, the, with the Stones. But the most famous, of course, is Woodstock. Yeah. Woodstock, I mean, you got to see 25 acts in a f almost four-hour film yeah. that encompassed that three days that was so iconic. And, and we have that preserved. We can always look back, oh, well, what did the 60s look like? Well, let's watch Woodstock. And sure. Woodstock is probably the best example of what the counterculture became of the 1960s, of, of music. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, though, that I think, correct me if I'm wrong, chronologically, those documentaries came later after uh, a lot of rock and rollers appeared in film and popularity I don't think they would have made the screen. Anybody would have funded them had right. there not been a, an audience for it, a proven audience. Right. Can I leave you with something really random? This is like a really random thing. I, have you guys been to the movie theaters lately? Oh, yeah. And you yeah. go early? No, so wait, wait, does, does, does Netflix and Apple and Hulu count? No, that doesn't no? count. I'm in no, a I movie theater. <laughs> okay. Well, let me just offer this. I've noticed because I get there early, you know, when you watch the, um, the the trailers, that lately a lot of the the music from the '60s is starting to appear in the trailers of movies. Like all of a sudden, they're using an updated version of a Yardbird song, yeah, or an updated version of a Jackie DeShannon song, or yes. the one that I I'm remembering most is the updated version of of an Elvis song. Uh, in the trailer for All of Us Strangers. So, I mean, all of a sudden, you're seeing a lot of these 60s and early 70s kind of songs being reintroduced to a whole new audience, and they're doing it not in the movie, but actually in the coming attractions. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was kind of a random thing. Very I, interesting. I, yeah. I, I, it's just as an aside to pick up on movies, we went to the movies not long ago, maybe even last week, I don't remember, and we got there, we thought we were late. We got there right at the start of the movie, right? right? The movie time. We had to sit through 25 minutes of commercials. <laughs> commercials. <laughs> flat out, unbiased, you know, j commercial messages. Then the previews came on for another 20 minutes. Yeah. And then the movie started. You weren't late. Oh, Almost forty-five minutes. You well, you yeah, have to John, we You have movie. to change. You have to change your ticketing to the theater for an extra seventeen dollars a ticket that doesn't show the commercials, just like Prime and Hulu and the rest of them now. They have yeah. two different well, if you go to the theater, you, went, you don't have any choice. You went, well, you went to, to the to, wrong to, theater. To, to close on this thought, long live rock and roll. And uh, you know, if you want to see these great uh, '60s artists. You can see them in a lot of a lot of uh, celluloid of the 1950s and 60s. Absolutely. Well, thank goodness for that, because I don't need to see any rappers. No. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a, or that's any a, hip hoppers. That's a, that's a, that's a, a story for another day. We don't have to yeah. get into that today. So, but but I, I will say that the rock and rollers of the 50s and 60s, and even you know our R and B artists of the 50s and 60s, they were they were big. I mean, you know, it, uh, yeah. Marvin Gaye's music and Stevie Wonder's and the Supremes as well. So, I mean, it was um, yeah, it was a it was an exciting time for music, and the fact that it was able to bleed into cinema, I think, is a blessing for us who enjoy you know classic films. And they are, and they are pure entertainment because I'm guessing that none of these films ever won an Oscar. Mm, Glenn Campbell was up for an uh, an Oscar nomination for True Grit. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I mean, more recently, I mean, we're seeing Win Billy Eilish and David Bowie and and David Byrne of the oh, Talking right. Heads and Stevie Wonder. They've all won Oscars. Yeah, but I'm going back. I'm going. I'm going back to. Uh, uh, the, the threat of the Elvises and the... Yeah, you know, they may or may not. No, Elvis, Elvis and the Beatles did not win any Oscars that I can think of. Yeah. But you know, you know what? what? They're, fun, they're fun. They're fun. You can find them on, I'm sure, on some of the services, whether it be Prime or Netflix or what have you. Uh, and uh, I particularly enjoy the documentaries. Uh, the one that yeah. uh, Jackson did on the Beatles was astounding. I mean, it was Good. just a, a, great look, a great look for them. Uh, we just saw one on um, uh, Smith or Joni Mitchell, somebody like that, who uh, I make the noise. 
Uh, sure. That, that sounds like Joni Mitchell. Sure. Yeah, sure for sure. So a anyway, um, they're a lot of fun. I got. I have a, a as a as an exit ploy. I have a suggestion for a future discussion, uh -huh. and that is the use of pop music as a theme song, a closing credit, as a dirty trick to nominate it for a best song. Oh, that's a great that's a great one. And I, because I, that's, that's what they do. What, Just take what, any um, popular song, throw it at the end of the movie. It has nothing to do with the movie. Well, nothing I'll to do with the theme. I'll, I'll give you one as a teaser. All of Us Christmas, uh, uh, Faith Hill at the end of The Grinch. And that got nominated for an Oscar. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Next time. You Maddie, got it. Thanks. Thank you, guys. See ya. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.